Uh, infused righteousness, now you have a distinction between infused and imputed righteousness that this is kind of one of the foundations of the, the difference between the Lutheran and Roman Catholic traditions on, on justification. Now, when you're talking about imputed righteousness, this is a righteousness that is counted. Uh, it is counted to you as the righteousness of someone else or an alien righteousness, as Martin Luther would say. It is the righteousness of Christ that is imputed or, or counted um, to the sinner. And infused righteousness, on the other hand, is righteousness that is in the soul. It's infused into you, and it changes you inwardly. And you are righteous not because of a righteousness that is a covering, not because of righteousness that is counted to you, but because of a righteousness that is inherent or, or inside of you. Now, one of the things that people kind of find surprising sometimes is that when you read um, you know, Francis Pieper and, and some other Lutheran dogmaticians, they use the terms infused grace, gratia infusa, and um, Pieper doesn't reject that idea. Uh, but but what he says is that sanctification, not justification. So it's not wrong that there is an inward righteousness. Now, infusion is is not usually the word that we talk about to describe our sanctification or inward righteousness, I think just because of the relationship between that term infusion and the Roman Catholic view of justification. Um, but there's nothing inherently wrong with that idea. We do have an inward righteousness, and that inward righteousness does... Uh, you know, live itself out in our lives as we live in conformity to the image of Christ. So there is an infused righteousness, if you want to use the terminology of infused, um, not just an imputed righteousness, but that infused righteousness is not justification. So that's the concern, say, in the, uh, you know, in the Oceandrian controversy that shows up in the second generation of Lutherans, where um, Andreas Oceander, who Calvin also takes the task later as well, um, but Oceander is one who uh, says that the righteousness that uh, that saves us is the indwelling of Christ's divine nature and his divine righteousness. And that divine righteousness is so great that it swallows up human sin. So you're talking more in terms of ontology, in terms of justification, uh, rather than the, the forensic category of, of imputation. And, you know, where the, the formula of Concord goes into this issue, uh, and, and that's in Article 3 on the, the righteousness of faith and the formula of Concord, you know, they say the problem with Osander's view is that it conflates the two kinds of righteousness. That, no, it's not wrong that Christ indwells us. That's true. Um, and it's not a bad thing to say that there is a righteousness that's in me. It is. But that doesn't justify me before God. And, and it's very much a pastoral concern here because if my righteousness that saves is inward in any way at all, I'm going to be looking in for assurance. I'm not looking to something else. So I'm looking inward to say, you know, how do I know that I really have this inward righteousness? I'm looking at myself for salvation, or I'm looking for what God's doing in me, and then I'm always looking for signs to say, is God really working in me, or is he working in me enough? And, and that's the, the problem that the, uh, the Lutheran reformers have with this idea of, of an infused righteousness being a basis for justification. It really leaves, pastorally, uh, it leaves them without a way to just proclaim uh, absolution, proclaim forgiveness, proclaim uh, complete assurance of salvation. And, and so really it's a pastoral concern. And that issue still divides, divides today.